Nerd On the Podcast is proudly partnered with Apogee Electronics and Odyssey Headphones, leaders in the field of audio. Attention, please be advised. The following episode contains spoilers. Don't say we didn't warn you. Well, just because something new comes out doesn't mean you have to hate it immediately. <laughs> no, it was just there was so much hype. What's up, everybody? Welcome to wow. Nerd On, the podcast you didn't need, but you deserve. Where all levels of nerd are welcome. Wow. So calm. This is nice. See, I welcome could, to I, Nerd On. I could do that. This is nice, man. Every once in nerd a while. On Radio. Yeah. Now on NPR. Yeah. So today, <laughs> sometimes we run from our fears and towards our goals, but everyone has a dream. Today, we embark on the journey brought to the big screen by the same minds that saw the sweep, saw what swept the country last year with uh, Hamilton on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. The marquee topic for today is the a- the film adaptation in the Heights. Yeah, snaps, snaps, snaps. all around. So calm. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, <laughs> so I feel calm. like they, we can't clap here. Like, we just oh, gotta... yeah. we'll, we'll get in. We'll get in. I, and and I don't know any of the songs because I'm oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not fair. musically inclined. Everything's cool. But anyways, let's get on with uh, the show. Let's introduce the host. My name is Tom. I'm Corey, and I am Josh. And this episode is brought to you in part by the members of the Nerd On Nation that is powered by <gasps> Patreon. As a member of the Nerd On Nation, you do get fun perks like you get bonus episodes that nobody else hears. Uh, That's true. Like, like last month, we talked about uh, gatekeeping. Uh, this month, we're going to record next week. We also do the Nerd On Minute, uh, where we talk about something in a minute. Very Some, short. Very, very short. To the point. topping. Yeah. Sometimes it's food. Sometimes a lot of the it's times something. it's food. Don't, yeah, don't let's... sell it as anything else. <laughs> yeah. It's a micropod. <laughs> this is true. Uh, you also get early access to all these episodes. You get access to uh, channels on our Discord server that nobody else, nobody else, nobody else has. Nobody else has. Nobody else has it though. Nobody else has access to these, but you, because you are <laughs> members of the Nerd On Nation, and you do get what we call the Nerd On Nudge on our other weekly show, the Nerd On Update, in which we answer your questions. <gasps> First. Yeah. Yeah. Snaps again. (laughs) (laughs) And the heights. (laughs) But also a huge shout out to our partners in crime, Apogee and Odyssey. Odyssey, we are rocking their LCD ones today. Wonderful open back headphones. So 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 comf. So comf. Uh, Like we have said, and they have accepted, if your ears were mouths, they taste like butter. Yeah. It's true. It's true. And a huge shout out to Apogee. Because uh, we would not have gotten through the pandemic without not the Apogee all. Hype Mic. Uh, wonderful, wonderful microphone. So do check it out. Um, and a new one, which is fun. Yeah. Shout out to Embody Audio. Embody Audio. Which we are actually uh, running a giveaway right now for the next, uh, it's only got a couple more days left until... Sunday, in which uh, we are giving away a code for Resident Evil uh, Village, yeah. and also one year license to their program, Immerse Hive. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It's a spatial audio program that I am going to get to show these guys on stream. Soon. I'm nervous. Mm. <laughs> uh, I believe that they're they uh, they tweeted us and they said they were excited for it because we had to push long boring story. Anyway, they were like it's. A terrifying experience yeah. to play oh, Resident God. Evil with surround sound. So Good I'm sell. excited. Good sell. I am excited. But that's the housekeeping. I think that we should get... <laughs> Help, Help me. <laughs> I think that we should get on to this musical of an episode. Yes, I agree with this. And do the thing. I agree with these things. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> oh no, Tom always looks at me and then I panic. That brings us to our first segment of the show. Uh, in which we uh, we everything we cover we rate on a scale of one to five, uh, with one being the lowest, five being the highest. Doesn't matter how low you are, the lowest score will be the grump for the week. No so with that how section, high we are or or low, okay, or high. Okay. Hey, whatever you want to rate it, you do it. <laughs> but if you're a four point nine and everyone else rated five, guess what? You're the grump. So with that segment, we jump into. Guess that grump. In the heights, we guess the grump, and then we go. <laughs> I don't know the song, so I'm like, You're oh, doing I, I, great. Can, I can help. I can uh, help. Yeah. They don't know it, but there's like a whole street of people dancing. They outside. don't. They can't see it. If you watch our YouTube videos, you'll see it. <laughs> shout, out, sh- shout out to our second AD uh, for, for doing that. Video. Yeah. Video. Yeah. Video. Don't, don't ruin it for the people. The rehearsals. Yeah. Man, it was a lot. Uh, so since I already really explained it before, which... 
you usually do after, but I put my own little spin on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess, uh, you know what? I'm going to go first, and then I can take notes afterwards. Okay. Wow. So I'm going to go with, this is, oh, you know what? We talked about this last week. It is like an ultimatum with only three people. You're like, it is. It's not, it's either that person. Who am I going to hurt today? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. But also, um, what we're doing is we write down our numbers beforehand. Yes. And I haven't written mine down. But I, I wrote just, mine I, down. I just did just now. So. I'm sure you already know it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with Tom because Josh is a musical theater boy. Oh. I'm the one that musicals. This is a tough one for me, but uh, I'll say I'll say Tom. Okay. The musical theater boy. Okay. Popcorn Tom. Tom. Popcorn me. Um, I'll say I'll say Josh. Okay. One for Tom, one for Josh. All right, then. My vote is for Kate. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for Tom. Tom oh, will be my surprising. vote. Surprising. Oh, surprising, surprising. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, guess what? Are you sitting, what? listening, or watching this video and being like, those, I am. those damn fools? You should know Corey hates musicals. You should vote for him. You're yelling at your computer or your sound system Shaking in your car. Shaking your fist at the sky. Oh. Well, guess what? You can participate if you join the Nerd on Nation. Can you? Yeah. You could take part in these polls for Guess That Grump. Wow. And if you get it right, you get to be the Gatorade, Grass Fred, uh, Jameson, Barton. Key of G. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? what? You just, st- just gave it up words. I did. <laughs> I did. Well, but you Grumper. Did guesser. No, no. Grumper. Uh, if you get it right, you get a shout on the show. That's what we're trying to say. Shout here. out to our video editor that what always puts that? text over that. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot. <laughs> Julie, I'm so sorry. It's just going to say inaudible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and with that, the Nerd On Nation has spoken, but I, I uh, there is a tie. Whoa. There's a tie. For who the nerd on nation thinks the grump will be. And, Talk to me. Uh, it is you, Josh, and it is you, Tom. All right, that sounds right. So, okay, that sounds all right. Pew, 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 That's pew. Interesting. Okay. So, I'll give you each another point. So, the way this will go down is at the end of the episode, I will go first with no votes, mm-hmm. then Josh with two votes, and Tom with three votes. All right. Boom. Uh, so, that's it. We're doing a thing. So, now. We go to our complete spoiler of this segment, which Hell is yeah. our initial reactions and our first impressions. <gasps> who, do you do? who do you want to go I'll first? I'll go first. <laughs> uh, do it. I suggested this topic. So. You did. Um, so oh, you did. Th- my f- <laughs> yeah, my first impression uh, of the movie was obviously being very excited for it, but I had heard the music when it first came out, hit the scene in, in New York. Um, and it was kind of this explosion of like this Lin-Manuel guy. He wrote this crazy show that's talks about specific things we've never heard talk about in a show. And it's done in a way, the songs are written in a way that we've never really heard before. And, uh, you know, it, it, and this is his first, this was his first big. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he wrote other shows before before that, but this was his off Broadway than Broadway, uh, in the Heights. Um, and I was given to me by a buddy of mine, uh, Zach Schumann, shout out, Mm, uh, Quen. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were just infatuated with it. Um, I never got to see it while I was there, but I did get to watch the PBS stage filming of it. Nice. Um, which I think is still available to watch, um, or at least clips of it on YouTube. Uh, I would highly recommend that to anyone. So when I finally saw this, uh, this this trailer for this, I think it was before the pandemic. Even mm-hmm. they they teased it. And then obviously everything got pushed. Um, I yeah. was I was pumped because. I know Hamilton hit in the same kind of way, but I was I didn't get on that train until I saw it, the Hamilton train. I was like, this is cool. I like Lin Manuel, but In the Heights was 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 like what I fell in love with. So getting to see it on screen and with Anthony Ramos playing the lead, uh, it was just because there are clips I had seen on YouTube of him also playing Usnavi. Uh, he was like the touring cast, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, fun. Um, and that's kind of how they met. Uh, if my story serves. Uh, correctly uh, or my memory serves correctly uh, but yeah I, I I am a musical theater guy um, I, I, I like much like Josh I went to school for musical theater and so getting to see this one kind of come to life and in the trailer seeing the uh, the kind of surrealist stuff I was pumped I was really pumped hmm. I'll go next okay um, I really didn't have any expectation of this I I was kind of like Okay. Uh, for me, when I was going to... So this went to Broadway 2008. Uh, I was still in college at that time. The early 2000s were a lot of like 
a lot of the modern musicals that are like considered classics now, like mm-hmm. last five years, I made a list. Wicked. Last five years, yeah. Uh, Spring Awakening, this. Spring Awakening was huge at the uh, same time. Too. Hairspray, even. The Jonathan 20... Groff, who is the lead in Spring Awakening on Broadway, was is actually friends with Lynn. Obviously, he's in Hamilton, Hamilton but yeah. they did a promo video to promote someone picking up and producing in the Heights. And he's in it. He's, he did yeah. the promo video. It's so good. Nice. Check it out if you can. Um, I just want to shout out Spam a lot. Uh, Wicked came out. Thoroughly Modern Millie. Avenue oh. Q. Um, a lot of these uh, musicals that were just like kind of considered classics these days came out at that time. And me, I grew up on like Rodgers and Hammerstein. Sure. Like these like classic sure. like Oklahoma and Music Man. Cinderella. Shit like that. Yeah. 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 Um, and so when the modern musicals came out, I was a little bit, I was also cast most of the time baritone. I remember a musical theater teacher once said, you, you're, you're more suited for classic musicals, like the way that my voice oh, was and all that kind of stuff. And so it also created a hype. These kinds of musicals created a hype that it's kind of like when things get very popular, you almost like do the basic thing and you're like, oh, I'm not interested and wah, wah, wah. Oh, Yeah. And, That's not yeah. called the basic thing. That's called being a bitch. Well, just because something new comes out doesn't mean you have to hate it immediately. <laughs> no, it was just there was so much hype. Thanks, Tom. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Appreciate that. You don't have um, to like it. But you don't have to hate it immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I did. I wasn't on the train until I saw it. The same way that you oh, said. Okay. And I watched it, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" And the movie itself, I'm looking forward to seeing it on stage. But the movie itself, I. This is an, a, a wonderful modern musical mm-hmm. movie because I felt like they used the medium. Yeah. Because a musical in itself is a little surreal and it's like just as Yeah, people just are singing itself. and dancing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there are a few scenes we'll, we'll talk about later, but they use the medium really well. And like what you can do with film, with cinema, the, the ways that you can bend reality and stuff like that, I just thought, they did a really wonderful job with that. I was like, this is wonderful. This is really nice. And it was a wonderful cast. Like I really enjoyed it. This is a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah. Thumb. I think I was, uh, N a, I was a target audience member because I absolutely have no interest in musicals. And so it's the wonderful thing what art can do is that it can bridge gaps between people's experiences and what current artists are creating. Mm-hmm. And so if someone like me who grew up on Disney, I just felt like all musicals were like, it's about a princess who could probably solve her problems by just probably like going to college or something. And then, you know, having a life experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, but instead we get like, you know, uh, this just mel- melodrama of like how a dude saves her. Um, and then, you know, I've had the, you know, to me, my experience with musical films have been like Moulin Rouge, Les Mis. Um, yeah. I mean, I went to college and we had to, t- I took a theater class so I could like kind of learn a little bit more about it. And like we had to go watch, you know, Seussical Musical and stuff like that. So oh, nice. Like, things like that were like what I had experienced. So to be honest and fair coming into it, I was like a neophyte. I, I, had, I had no idea what to expect. Um, and then understanding that John M. Chu, who directed the film, uh, Asian brother, homie, sig up. Um, I was like, I gotta represent. And then I remember Corey being so hyped for it, and I was just like, I it's it's a, it's a really fun and interesting experience being someone who has no interest in musicals at all, seeing other people who are like, oh my god, this is gonna be crazy. And I'm like, all right, cool, man. I trust That's you. That's an uncanny impression. I trust you. Of <laughs> That's pretty good. And I was like, oh. over here now, she wouldn't know which way to run. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, uh, and I was like, all right, whatever. And like, and that's the thing where you kind of like, you just want to expect to see like really well made art. Um, and it's something that doesn't have to appeal to you and come to your front door and be like, hey, I made this for you. This is something that we yeah. created. And you came in as like a tourist, and that's how I felt. Like I came in as a tourist. I un- I learned something new about. Uh, a community and about a time and uh l- and I've watched Hamilton on Disney Plus and knowing that's a different production than what people kind of really ex- ex- received or experienced when it first came out like just kind of seeing the artistry and the the growth of these performers and the writers mm-hmm. and and the the directors it, it's 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 a cool experience I think for me um for someone that doesn't typically run to the theater or go to theatra Go watch, go watch uh, musical theater. Sure. I'm like, oh, this is 
wonderful, and I think people who don't watch musicals and people who do will have common ground when they watch this film. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's that's all I got. There say. you go. So that really didn't sp- spoil a whole lot, actually. You no. Were a little more explicit. The guy that it. got a lot of votes was like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Uh, brief, pr- a brief synopsis in production? Yeah, yeah, yes. Our next two segments. Yeah. And our brief synopsis will be given to us I by... I said brief production and synopsis, but, yeah. you know... <laughs> We're here. <laughs> you got to do that production really quick. Real quick. quick. Real, Real quick. quick. Those long names. I'll uh, do it like Lynn Wright's songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, brief synopsis. In Washington Heights, New York, the scent of warm coffee hangs in the air just outside of the 101st Street subway stop, where a kaleidoscope of dreams rallies a vibrant and tight-knit community. At the intersection of it all is a likable and magnetic bodega owner who hopes, imagines, and sings about a better life. Hmm. That was, that was nice. Right? Well done. It's very cute. Uh, so I'm going to do the production, and I'm going to try my damnedest to pronounce all these names correctly, as we always do on the show. Yep. Uh, apologies in advance. Uh, yes, apologies in advance. Uh, production distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures, known for Space Jam, The Dark Knight Trilogy, and The Matrix, which is so funny you chose those movies, because mm. they're the total opposite of what <laughs> four of the other movies are. Actually, out. Space Jam is pretty... Uh, all right. Directors, uh, John M. Chu. Uh, for Crazy Rich, Asian, Crazy Rich Asians, Step Up To, and Now You See Me Too, which, qu- quick side note, Tom told me that that's the, what he directed before this, and I was like, wow, okay. I, yeah, Producers, I did not know that. Uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, known for Hamilton, Moana, Sesame Street. Uh, the other producers are uh, Chiara Aligira Hudes. I think I got that right. Hudes. Uh, Hudes, right. Uh, and Anthony Bregman, known for Foxcatcher, Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless oh, wow. Mind. Yeah, and I'm thinking of ending things. Scott Sanders, uh, the Pee Wee Herman show on Broadway, The Color Purple, Young America, uh, Mara Jacobs, The Condemned, The Color Purple, The Odd Life of Timothy Green. Writers, Kira Alegria Hudis. Thank you, Tom. Hudis. 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 Yes. I'll get there someday. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. Uh, Vivo, uh, Life is a Carnival and My America, based on the In the Heights book of the same name by the same writer. And Lynn Manuel Miranda. Uh, cast Anthony Ramos, A Star is Born, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and Hamilton. Corey Hawkins, known for The Walking Dead, Straight Out of Compton, uh, and Six Underground. Leslie Grace, known for her music career, which maybe you can expand. I don't know. I didn't know her before this. Neither did I. But I looked up IMDb and I mean? it was this. All of her music. Yeah. It's now just, you know. It's all just musical career. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, Melissa Barrera, uh, Siempre Tuya Alcapuco, Tanto Amor, an upcoming Scream movie. Um, Olga Meredes, who played the abuela, who mm-hmm. who broke uh, my wife's heart. She just loved her so much. Uh, the Place Beyond the Pines, One for the Money, and Requiem for a Dream. And the, also, uh, she was the abuela in the Broadway yes, show. 100%. Uh, which she won a Tony for. Uh, and this is a fun one. Daphne Rubin Vega, known for Wild Things, Sex in the City, Jack Goes Boating, and the original Mimi Marquez from the Rent Broadway cast. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was a fun one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gregory D. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. these. Totally. Nod. Uh, so Rosario Dawson yeah, took yeah, that role over. Okay. Oh. Uh, Gregory Diaz the fourth, uncapable, un- uncapable, <laughs> unbreakable <laughs> Kimmy Schmidt. She totally was totally different show. She was capable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, New Amsterdam, Vampires vs. the Bronx, and Jimmy Smith's Dexter, Star Wars, and NYPD Blue. Release date was June 10th, 2021. Runtime is 143 minutes. Budget and gross a 55 budget, a 55 million dollar budget, and a five million dollar gross so far. Uh, as of the recording of this, it is 96 percent. On Rotten Tomatoes from critics from 250 users and 96% audience from 500 verified users. So I'll update right now at the time of recording. Oh, yes, please. 11.6 million in the box office. Okay. So, so not 5 million, 11.6. Yes. So 6 million in a day. Nice. Um, still low, but also we're still in pandemic life. So True. Yeah, we are. Um, now we can go to the complete, uh, we go to the spoiler county. Spoiler, spoiler spo- country. So if you haven't seen it yet, pause it. Spoiler ba- ba- barrio. Get your uh, HBO Max <laughs> login, either your own or borrow it from a friend like I do, and uh, go watch it. Come back. We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. Yeah. And we're waiting, and we're going. Oh, wow. In the Heights. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Did you cry? All right. Uh, so oh, now wait, go- wait. Pause for the post credit scene. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. There we go. So now, um, yeah, we're going to go complete spoilers of everything. We'll do our favorite parts, favorite characters, our uh, qualms, and then finally our rating. Yeah. So, uh, Josh, start us off. I'm going to start. No, I'm going to start. Tom's going to start. I'm going to take it away. Hey, Josh, can you second? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'm Um, going to wait. I really, really enjoyed, um, because I know Josh was going to mention this, the part with uh, Benny and Nina where they're dancing on the wall. 
<laughs> was that it? Yep. Yep. Hey. <laughs> we actually tag team that. Yeah. We planned that. Well, it was, it was we actually rehearsed it. We were we were second team. Oh, we we spent were the too ones much time together. <laughs> we were we were on the the balcony and we were actually the ones dancing yeah. on the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. walls. Yeah. Um, which was I thought was cool. To your point, I really liked what you said about like how this movie this this adaptation and that's what I really want to say. Like this is an adaptation of stage the, the stage performance and they utilize the film medium to break um you know realistic boundaries and go into like more of a surrealist world and they it, break the would it maybe it's like the internal fourth wall i don't know if there's an official for that but the kid the reacts yeah, to, to the them camera. dancing on the window oh, like yeah. they're breaking the sur- the surreal world mm. in that moment but i it didn't bother me i was like oh that's really it's an interesting world that they're building in this like the characters are experiencing it and the world like it's I just was like it's a wow. very interesting play and I, and to me I I can't help but think that filmmakers and you know particularly you know sometimes people of color filmmakers are 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 like drastically more aware that the um, the audience are are becoming more sophisticated and doing things like that um create a dialogue for audience members to be to think like we know that this isn't real and so we can have that moment where we're kind of winking about it. <laughs> yeah. And then, but also realizing like, but this is a real moment for them. And You don't and break it, into song? I mean, yeah. Well, like that moment when they're making all the hand gestures and painting mm-hmm. like yes. money bags and the golf clubs and stuff like the, that. Um, the 96K. The the fabric that was coming from the sky. Yeah. I just thought was fabric gorgeous. Rolls. Yeah, yeah, the fabric rolls. I kind of felt like that was almost like a, um, like a hold my beer moment to Aladdin. Yeah. <laughs> Because of all the flowy like <laughs> yeah. things, I'm like, this you is, can't do that. Oh my dear. Um, well, yeah. I wanna, well, just on that moment alone, I, I'm going to tell the, the story of what happened. So at the end of that scene, they kiss and they slide down back into the uh, the fire escape. And I was watching it with Tom, and he just goes, "Hell yeah!" Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing where it's like, it, 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 that, the, the, hell so yeah. So for my, it was so smooth. Like legit, my experience watching this film, I was just like, okay, I, there's. It's 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 not like sing song. It's not like poppy operatic sing song where it's like in, in a Disney movie. It's rap, and it's done in a way where like all the dialogue is done in in song, and yeah. so like you're getting information and you're also seeing the relationships and experiences of these characters within the world. Um, and so when you're like, okay, is this a story about like perseverance and your your your, your origins, and then also like it's also a love story. There's a lot of it going on yeah. at the same time, and yeah. you're just like. Holy crap! I'm getting like so much story being told to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so like when that happened, I was like, finally, someone got what's you know like they they made it happen. But I like how that their their story is like a we used to be a thing, you left, and now we come back and we're back to harmony. But you know we have a renewed sense. We're changed because of the experiences that we've had. So you but, leaving it doesn't mean it's the end. It's- yeah, but it's like they know that they can't hide away from their feelings of like we will always have each other and have this relationship and this thing between us mm-hmm. but we all have our paths to go like yeah. i have to leave you during this blackout because i have a duty to this community mm-hmm. you have to leave because you have you know not loftier goals but you you i'll, I'll go on further on that sure but it's, yeah it's great i think like would i would almost consider lynn manuel's uh musicals like rap operas yeah rap yeah. rap operas Rap because yeah, there isn't any. It's like it's much Pop like there's very few dialogue again, scenes. The stage version of Rent, uh, unlike the movie version, there's no spoken dialogue, or if there is, it's a line or two. Everything is sung. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, just continuing on that scene. I mean, when we do topics like this, where it's like a, a this week tonight kind of thing, <laughs> um, it's always hard because I don't often get the opportunity to watch it again to deep dive to deep dive so with this time it's kind of like a it's a it's a journey in terms of entertainment but it's also a technical brain thing of watching like with that scene specifically i was like man that set piece had to be like like on so many different like ways that it had to move and the actors had to react oh gyros yeah. like gyros thanks nolan yeah. thanks because <laughs> at one point it had to be straight up and down there probably are cuts but there's a there's there's one particular movement where they were doing where they were using the staircase as like chairs like seats yeah. mm-hmm. and then it would like slowly they use a little balcony as a table as a table and then like you were talking about the the when they were sliding down for the kiss I mean that was like a just yeah. a tilt. flawless, gently, yeah, nice flawless. Tilt, yeah. Um, 
I mean, an, another one for me, just an overarching thing would be the mixture of dance types. Mm -hmm. There was just so many different, I mean, there was hip hop dancing, there was modern dancing, there was even there's, ballet in there. There was double jointed shit going on. Yeah. yeah uh, that was wild. Yeah. That was pop and lock kind of stuff going on. My um, shoulders hurt thinking about it. Uh, I mean, a specific scene that I will say is the um, Patience and Faith song when the grandmother passes. Mm. Oh, yeah. At the, the, the subway yeah, hallway. Mm. It was interesting uh, reading an article with her where she, when she originally did it, she was, in her mind, she was too young to even just play that. Mm -hmm. And, but she got over that. It was a very interesting story. But for this, she was like, how are you going to take a song like this and film it in the subway? Yeah. Like, that doesn't make any sense. But then once you see it, you're like, the light at the end of the the, the oh, tunnel, yeah. the just the slow passing. It's a it match cut a, with the light from the family. Yeah. yeah, it was just it was a it was a beautiful, colorful experience. Yeah, and her story of her experience coming here and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was it was heartbreaking, mm -hmm. but beautiful. Yeah, I have to say, like, um, one thing in particular is like uh, a brown person watching this, and my story is different than pe other people of color. Um, but it's it is a very interesting thing of this weight that you have of your of generational responsibility mm -hmm. and trying to do more for the people who came before you and like quote, Nina and her dad. Yeah, but also with um, Abuelita, like you know, like did I make my mom proud? Yeah, like d is it enough? Like can I pass or is or do I still have work to do? Mm -hmm. And it, you know, at some point you have to kind of be like, it's enough, you know, and and accept it. Um, and, and it kind of uh, hits you in a way where um, for me like you kind of have this sense of like there is no there is no you you are not an individual you are part of a long canvas uh, that your family has been weaving for decades and decades and, yeah. and generations and generations and so this like touches on that in a way where um, I believe it was it was that part where I started tearing up but the big thing for me was uh, Jimmy Smith's development and, mm -hmm. and that, that character yeah. and I remember watching it and there's a big conflict between him and his daughter, Nina, who he, you know, sends off and, you know, sacrifices his life for hers. And she doesn't want this responsibility in this life. Um, when I was watching it, I was like, he's right. <laughs> I straight up was like, I was like, they're going to resolve it in a way where maybe it's more about the new generation, about their individuality and their choices, uh -huh. not being controlled by traditionalism and dogma. But like, for me, like seeing him talk about like, you can do what we can't. You were the best, and, and your revenge. Us. You were, your revenge is your success. Yeah. Like it's hard, it's tough, and I get it. We've been there. And like this, a lot of the story is a lot of story of survival and celebration of their tradition that they've been able to pretty much like thrive through the hardships of their of their people, and him being like, D stop like trying to help me because I'm trying to help you, mm -hmm. and I, I I was just like. I know where he's coming from so sure, bad. Yeah. I think he he recognizes like the even the changes from when he was young to his daughter and the generation. Like though things haven't changed completely, there's a lot more possibility I mean, for change yeah. and actual movement forward. And the fact that she kind of gets her inspiration from a um I can't think of a like a march, mm -hmm. uh that kind of thing. It, it's it's very oh, the protest. The mm -hmm. protest. It's very poetic and it's very appropriate for. Mm -hmm. It's not for a way. Out. It's not a way out. It's a way in. And yeah. I, 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 to me, like I, I so I, like during that argument, I so agreed with him. But I understood the storytelling of like, but what he, how he's conveying what he wants is in a selfish manner, and yes. like she needs to discover that for herself. And that's something that he was not letting her do. Is kind of just like just kind of forcing change he, upon her. Yeah, he was setting the course for her instead of her building the course that she wants to do it. And yeah. so she has to because she may not have been ready for the that kind of thing. And that and that's the thing where that's just a microcosm of every person in that film, in that story, in this world has goes through. That mm -hmm. there is a yeah. responsibility that they owe to their parents, but they have to do it themselves. Themselves, yeah. and it's like coming in out their of their way. Shell. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it reminds. Uh, one thought that occurred to me a bunch while watching this is like, I could be full of shit, but there, I think there's a concept in life where it's like tiny deaths in life mm -hmm. where you, you have these moments where it's almost like you die, you let go. And it's like, there are, there are many moments like that where it's like, she dies of this expectation that she had for herself. Uh, even a snobby at the end, uh, when he kind of, he, he dies of his dream to go back to, 
uh, the homeland mm -hmm. and stay here. And it, there's like this freeing moment, like when the grandmother yeah. died, when the grandmother actually passed. Uh, I love the way that they captured. You could see like this. I'm gonna rest now. Yeah. Well, she was happy. Well, like, so, so we were talking about this a little bit, and it's it's kind of less of I would say little. I mean, I like that that little death thing, and I. Uh, but for me, it's more of a uh, realization that you can still live out your parents' hopes and expectations for you uh, in your own way. So, like, you know, Usnavi was was sold on this idea from when he was eight that his dad had this this place uh, in the Dominican Republic that was you know, beautiful and they had friends and da, da 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 And then it wasn't until that last moment that he was like, oh wait, that was that was his. I have that. I do have that mm -hmm. here. It's not it's not so much that he let go of that dream. It's that he realized he was already living it. It's like a resetting of your own expectations yeah, yeah. of where you you're in your view of reality, you you see things in a myopic view and you don't understand that there's things outside yeah. that can help. Yeah, because if he went, he wouldn't he'd lose ev everyone. He wouldn't, yeah. you know, the cousin he Everything met two Christmases built, ago. Yeah. All that community. For me, I feel like the little death is very sound with Jimmy Smith's character. Yeah. Like, yeah. when he realizes that he cannot control his daughter, he dies inside. But, like, to me, the more active version of it is you kill your former self. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. like, with Usnavi killing his former self being like, I'm not, I have to stop running away from my future because I'm running towards my past. I need to run towards my goals, which is to create what my father had. Here. And my dad created something great great back home, and he wanted me to have something better here. Mm -hmm. And so what I need to do is do the exact same thing for the next generation, right. which is why he starts the uh, the citizen progress yeah. process. And so I'll, there's... And there, he tells the story to his kids. And... Yeah, and there's, there's, there's that sense where it's like, yeah, there's a lot of like, you know, disappointment kills the... kill uh, is the little death, but then like once you start realizing what your actual goal is, then it's like, yeah, you have to stop putting yourself in complacent areas where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, the the death of of Benny and Nina's old relationship is the realization that they're different people now. But then they kill their former selves being like, let's stop off this, you know, circumstance and the ceremony that like Move we forward. can actually just be together. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just, uh, there's That's interesting things with that. But I mean, well, I, I think I, I train rolled you, so I apologize. I haven't heard okay. any favorite parts from you, Corey. Uh, that's okay. I was just enjoying hearing you guys talk about it. Um, the One of the parts that I really, really loved mostly because of the acting within it and you could tell they were singing on the set was the the ending champagne mm -hmm. in the apartment. Yeah. Uh, it's all one shot, uh, one take. Um, they are singing on set. They're singing on set. And I thought it was just this like wonderful dance of them both being emotional for different reasons and obviously he's channeling all of this into like, I, well, I gotta get this. She got me this champagne and it's really important that I that I opened this champagne because she got it for me. She spent the time to get it. Like oh, we should celebrate. Pages. And she's like, it's not about the fucking champagne, dude. Like <laughs> listen to me for a second. Um, and I, I was totally just from start to finish on that scene enthralled. Um, I thought it was, it was so well acted. I think throughout this whole film, my favorite part is just Anthony Ramos doing anything. Um, I, I do have to continue my uh, Tom calling out uh, universe uh, if Usnavi wasn't a fucking little cuck, then he would get his shit together and just actually tell her how he feels. Yeah. But I mean, then we wouldn't have a story. Yeah, exactly. But like, um, so it's fun to see him flounder and all that stuff. So that was, I'm going to do two because I waited. Yes. Uh, so that's one of my favorite parts. And then my second favorite part is the Barrio Carnival mm -hmm, scene. So good. Um, and I was yeah. talking, I was talking to, to Tom a little bit about this, um, on our way here. And I was like, the thing I like about this show, and I think what, is part in part made it such a success. Uh, as speaking of as a as a white man watching this show, it's not a show that catered to my demographic. Like it was definitely a show for that community. It invited me in. It didn't exile me, but there was a lot in it that's I got to witness another part of this country I live in, um, in, in a very base way. Uh, and I really loved the way it unapologetically was like this is who we are this is how we celebrate you're more than welcome to this is our story this enjoy. is our story enjoy yeah it didn't cater to me it wasn't like over explaining certain things and it wasn't like oh does this make you laugh do you want to buy this there do you want to make billions yeah, of dollars there weren't subtitles through the whole movie whenever they just they switched to you know spanish and back to english and so like uh that whole scene kind of encompassed all of that for me and i was like this is it's just such a wonderful celebration i was listening to anthony ramos talk about this show and and why it meant so much to me is like growing up I didn't have 
uh, anything that that talked about my experience this way. Didn't have anything that talked about my culture this way. Uh, in a way that I could, it, it it celebrated and it talked about the the real struggles and stuff like that. You know, it was always designated to a side character. Um, so it's 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 a yeah. wonderful experience. But that that carnival scene especially was just like I really wonderful. I really enjoyed it because it was the matriarch, the the barbershop yeah. girls who 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 brought the city back together, and that and that's like a really cool thing because you think again, me being this Disney child. Like, it's the main character. So uh, Usnavi has to bring them all together and he has to do that stuff. And we talked a little bit about that where, like, depending on whose arc you're you're watching or in, in your um, listening to their song, everyone else plays a side character in that story. Everyone yeah. else is the main character of their own story. But within the grand whole of what this film is trying to say, of the entire, it's not Usnavi's story. It's mm -hmm. in the Heights. It's not. Washington Heights is the main character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is <laughs> the community itself. Yeah. And, and you could even, like, elevator pitch it where it's like, this is like musical Sin City. <laughs> where it's like it's about the place <laughs> yeah you know okay. like okay. The, 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 the place is a character in itself and it moves and it breathes and like things that you really see that's great is like during the blackout like the fireworks happening there's a song of course but like in moments of panic there's people playing around there's people like just running scared yeah. there are cops being like you know dispatched there's cabs being dispatched so like everything's happening all at the same time so you always feel like this world is alive Yeah, and you even see like during the blackout there's just shots of like dead businesses and the the barbed wire and all these things then you have like benny mm -hmm. hooking up a generator to run dispatch and then you have other people celebrating you know having that, a party across that the whole street. thing just like i didn't know that that was a thing cab uh, dispatch yeah cab dispatch well i mean like the whole it's show very interesting it. just of how they're because it didn't i i totally it was totally lost on me that it was cab dispatch i thought they were just like making sure that people were staying connected yeah. and like, okay, we need to get an ambulance over there. We, hey, my, yeah, work my on this. Because he, like, he, he were talking about his first fleet was a couple of, like two mm, maroon, cars. whatever it was, and now he's got a Go bunch of Go this guy. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> the car service. Maybe it's not taxis, but it's a car yeah. service. Yeah. Um, uh, going on your comment about Anthony Ramos doing anything, when he found the lotto ticket, yeah. uh, just like the reaction to that and just like the, the true like, no, you didn't. Yeah. No, you you you're messing with me from heaven. Yeah, like you're. What? Uh, it's a joke. This is a yeah. joke. Yeah. Um, and the the reveal of the bodega and what they had done to it overnight. Um, oh yeah. I'm a I'm a sucker for graffiti art. Yeah. Mm. And her making um, clothing clothing, clothing from a drop cloth, and then him painting that mural was just. Uh, it's I'm a sucker for that yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. I think that was a a nice little uh button on the on the entire narrative uh seeing him see that too was just like i don't know he's a, he's a really good actor I, re I read somewhere uh or heard somewhere and i was watching a bunch of interviews with him i don't remember what tv show it was but someone mentioned that lynn said that even though he didn't know him when he wrote this he it's anthony's part he's like i wrote this for you and i didn't know yeah um I just this had to find is you. you. Yeah. Yeah. What's, it, it's yeah, you've always been this person. Yes. I've always had I just had to find you. Yeah. What's uh wonderful about this show in terms of watching it, especially on screen, um because with musical theater there's a fine there's a fine balance. Not really. What you really mm -hmm. want to weigh towards is it, it's actors that sing and not singers that act. Mm -hmm. And these there's just some wonderful acting moments. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there just happened to be music to it. Yeah. And it was just really one last uh, favorite part for me is the pool scene, just 96, like the ninety six k, yeah, the just the, the whole unfolding of it, the the technicality of it, like really, really, yeah. Neat. I will say that sequence probably ruined any dance number I'm ever going to see. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 there's and, a and, lot going and, on, and that's the thing. Like with this, like you kind of just have to kind of marvel at the the scope of the whole and the film. technicality of it mm. like and, and i made a little joke about it, like shout out to the second ad and the first ad like you, yeah for people who don't know like john m chu directed the film so he directed the performances you know he adapted he helped adapt the script to like how it's going to look on visuals but the first ad first assistant director and the second assistant director work with all of the extras and so they're and the ones like pulling everyone around and it's like cool like and to me, I just making sure it's like the director has their vision, and then they make sure that the vision is organized. Yeah, right. like, I don't, right, right, right. I don't have a taste or an understanding of like why people in the front row dance one way and the people in the back row dance another way, or why they like are are collated in a way where I'm like, 
It just looks kind of like a mess, but I know that there's a, a science to it. <laughs> but like when it's all done and choreo- choreographed, and it's all done like they're on beat, they're on number, their their faces are performing, they're they're in it. You know, you can see when someone's dead inside, and they're just like, I hate this. Like, yeah, kind of the guys were underwater, like they probably hated this because they had to shoot this like at yeah. least twice. Um, but like it's like you know, it's it's hard, and to show like seeing again the limited experience of musical films that I've seen. Like, the worlds don't seem lively. Like, it's maybe one guy singing in the rain, dancing on a pole. Sure. And it's by himself, in which on makes sense. Lot. <laughs> right? But, like, here it's like, the whole city's alive. Like, everyone knows who everyone is. And it's it's part of the storytelling because the whole scene with the, the barbershop. Yeah. Where, like, tell me something I don't know. Yeah. Like, no everyone, everyone's talking about everyone's business. Yeah. And, like, that's that part of it where it's like, yeah, word travels fast. If you're talking to this person, they know. Like, why do you think you get free coffees? Like yeah. those kind of things happen. Um, but that sequence in itself, I was just like, I don't know any type of musical number as big as well done as this. That's from from the street to the inside to the pool to you know like different parts of the pool. Like between these characters, there's movement between these characters. There's a harmony between these two characters, and it all kind of interchanges. The stacking of vocals like, and like, yeah. uh, and then they just do like interstitial cuts of like random people like who are graffitiing the the towels who are stealing it. Who are, like all of these things are happening at the same time. It's like this is like the most. And it all comes together at the very end. Yeah, and, and there's a narrative to it too of yeah. what they're they're like. Yeah, there is this surreal unveiling of the lotto it, numbers. It's something it's like yeah, yeah, and something you can't have with like a normal action sequence, right? Because it would just be like I don't know what's happening, Michael Bay. I can't tell. We're here. <laughs> yeah. It's like oh, like everything's leading up to this moment with these numbers, and it's like so frenetic, and it's like I don't know what this guy's doing, but he's doing this you know dance move, and I'm like cool, like but it's part of it because everyone's yeah. going crazy, and it's like you're just absorbing so much energy from it so it's 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 a very crazy experience just to watch it on film and i can imagine what it's I mean, like on stage reading about it uh, about the uh, uh john talking about that specific scene of it was supposed to be only a two-day shoot and then it turned into a three-day shoot and like he was just i don't remember the whole thing but he was just like i had never seen a pool like that mm-hmm. a pool that big there's a lot that, of moments he tweeted out where it was just like it became a real community on set and you know you would you would call cut and they would just finish whatever they were the song they were doing or the moment they were celebrating and he's like that's when i knew this was what what i needed to be making it, it was it was a in in most movies celebration. you always, you always become a family but yeah this became like a town a yeah. city of exactly. people and um, go ahead oh no i was just going to say i could keep i could keep going forever yeah, I can keep but going. we do have other segments yeah. of this show Let's do, we do um, favorite characters yeah two let's do two Two favorite characters. Um, well, I again, I, Usnavi is is my absolute favorite. Um, Anthony Ramos is just uber talented, um, and I think he has all my favorite songs in the show. So dope. that dope, works. Dope, that's dope, another dope, reason dope. is that like you know when he's singing, I'm like, oh, that's, that's right, I love this song. <laughs> um, and then, man, I uh-huh, know, right? Two is tough. Two is tough because I, there's. I want to do three. <laughs> I, yeah. I do want to do three, but two. Uh, Tom always but says, "How my many did two you favorites pick? are intertwined, and that's why it's making it extra tough." But I think, I think uh, Nina mm-hmm. is my second favorite. Um, her story about like that feeling of leaving home to go uh, try to accomplish great things, but also that feeling of like, well, now I can never really c- can I ever come back the same? Am I abandoning my home? Do they? Everyone looks at me differently now, and they all put all their like hopes and dreams on me and that's maybe that's something i don't First want to like go to college that kind of like yeah it was like it was i really that story really resonated and it's it's you know uh beautifully done and beautifully executed but I, so yeah usnavi and, and nina i think josh you or me i'll go, go ahead. uh because we always throw it on you hmm? uh i'm gonna go a little different just because i mean of right. course a snobby um u.s navy u.s navy uh i uh abuela I just, mm. I just loved her. Um, you and Dana. When, the, when they're having a fight during the dinner, she just puts her hands like, no. Yep. no yeah, she's Man. just, she's seeing everything unfold and she's just, and I just love the idea of patience and faith. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I love that idea. And I am a total sucker for Jimmy Smith. Mm-hmm. Anything was, he is mm-hmm. in, I'm Dad like. Dad stuff, y'all. <laughs> anything that he's in, I'm like, just keep going. He just seems like such a good guy. And I know that he, when it was, he pushed very, he was a huge supporter of this happening. Yeah. So, well, when it was off Broadway, he offered to do the voiceover for the commercials for free. 
in exchange for that when it goes to Broadway, he gets house. Yeah, house seats. Yeah. Yeah. House seats. Um so yeah, I just and I love his story. Um yeah, that's yeah, that's me. Uh, Back to Tom. God, that first scene with Nina in the diner. The diner. Where he's oh, like, yeah. I'm the parent. Yeah. yeah. And he like pulls out that wad of cash. Yeah. And it's like, it's such a power play, but you understand like he has to try to keep up appearances. And yeah. that's a thing. And his whole like, there's no shame in waiting tables and there's no shame in, yeah. in it, but doing it, something different. There's that thing with, with so favorite character, uh, I'll do Jimmy Smith's first. Uh, so Kevin, that's his name. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's that level of like, I've been been through it but i also need to maintain my authority as a parent and my dominance as a yeah. man yes. and like it's it's such a thing i wish i could explain it more but it's something that's like so innately prof- like inherent amongst brown dudes it is not a, a white community thing it is not and it, it's it's it, i mean even if it is it's just a different version of it yeah because it's like someone that I, i've come from so much and i get to actually play ball with the big boys kind of yeah. thing. But then when I'm around my people, my family, like I have to have the tender hand, but then also make sure that they don't make me look like a fool in front of everyone else. Like what yeah. was the point of all my sacrifice, right? Um, and so I, I really resonate. But also to Josh's point, Jimmy Smith's, there's such a level with him, and I really caught this with Dexter, that like <sighs> he has a really good way that when he lies, his character lies, you can tell that it comes from an emotional place. It's mm-hmm. the place where it's like, I'm trying to help people, but I have to do, it's these, a hard lie. do these evils right. in order yeah. to do it. And he plays in such a way where it's like, it is like a father who hates having to tell their kid that they're wrong. And he's like, I'm just trying to help you. And it breaks your heart every time. And it's like, to me, I'm like, this feels like an experienced thing. It doesn't It feels, doesn't feel like something you, you practice. But right. that, that's maybe a disservice to the actor. Um, and my second favorite is Vanessa. Um, I really enjoyed her character. One, Bay for Day. Obviously. Uh, abs forever. Abs forever. Abs, yeah. abs for the fucking, <laughs> to the body. Abs and, for days. And um, I just really liked her story because I've never really uh, resonated with uh, Usnavi's character. Mm-hmm. Uh, although he is the one that's kind of pushing the emotional arc for the for the film. Yeah. Um, her story for me resonated where it's like, yeah, I have lofty goals. I want to set myself out to be these things. I don't have a security net to fall back on. So that someone could help me out with these things and these graces that help me out from the community, I don't know how to respond to them. And I really, really enjoyed her level of like, I can control this thing. I am the apple of someone else's eye and the desire, but also I could control that narrative. I'm not just something to be fond over. I am someone who's on my own journey. So it's you. I mean, I wish someone was like, a man, free coffee, baby. I'm like, oh, but there's also the Josh gives you free coffee anytime you want when you're here. I never get offered it. Well, it's kind of like a spoken, like <laughs> yeah, unspoken, agreeing. like, "Hey, yeah, whatever." You I would need, like bud. the the coffee dance. And oh, song, okay, please. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'll work on that. Yeah, um, um, I'll come over. But for there's also that entrepreneurial uh, spirit that yeah. many people don't they don't really know. But they like when you're entrepreneurs, you're hustling. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she is like what I like about Vanessa. You you can see she's looking at the world in a way of ideas. Mm-hmm. She like exactly that when she sees a piece of drop cloth or she's digging through the trash for fabric like yeah. you know she's she's looking for ideas and as an op- yeah, entrepreneur she found that pink silk ribbon in the next scene she has the shorts with the yeah. ribbon on it yeah um when you're an entrepreneur entrepreneur i've always had a hard time with that word like even us as nerd on we we're running our own business and yeah. like we're always like we're constantly looking at things like oh, that's cloths. an idea mm-hmm. that's an idea um so yeah it's it's very i mean she's hustling all the time and there's a focus there's a there's a myopic view of, in a sense, of life where you're like, I got to do this thing to make this thing successful. It's the dire straits. It's, yeah. And I think I really There's like... no time or room for anything else. I really like that sh- the way Lynn manuel and uh, Kureya uh, wrote the character in a way where she was in charge of her journey. There was no plot. Like, she will end up with him at a certain point. Because to me, I will say, I was like, I thought the movie was going to end like 40 minutes ago. Yes. And the way that they continue the story where she finds the drop class by herself, I was like, it's, again, to me, I think something that I feel that resonates with people of color. The the way you find freedom and yourself out is actually through your your, your culture and your heritage yeah. of like things in your community. So like, it's not the beautiful, tr- beautiful silk in a trash can. It is the beauty that's around you that is the quote unquote creating more culture with the spray yeah. camp. It's part of you. It's like what you think is actually trash. Yeah. But instead you find something more in it. It's actually representative of your community. And I, I just, I thought that was really, really cool uh, messaging 
in yeah. that way. Um, but yeah. Uh, so now we go to qualms. 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 Sticking it to. Uh, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I thought it was going to end multiple times. Yeah. Um, so I thought the we to me turn I, of the king type situation. And, but I mean that's that's the thing where my qualm is uh, a little bit indicative of my um, I guess unculturedness. Like because I thought the barrio song was going to be the end. I'm like cool, everyone's mm. back together, big old number and community. Scene. And then it Except didn't. that Usnavi was leaving the next day. And... Yeah, and I'll, it, well, it, that's the thing where we didn't have to see that because at the end he says like, "Let's not worry about it. Let's just dance like tonight. It'll yeah. dance like we had the, the moment." So everyone came together and everyone did this thing. I was like, "Oh!" And so when it didn't happen, I was just like, "Oh!" And so that quote unquote affected my viewing, watching ability, and all that stuff. Um, and then the second thing, um, I really would have to say like. I don't think there's much else other than the fact that I'm not someone that typically likes musicals. Yeah. But that's it. Those are literally the only things. That, like, if nice. I were to write a thing, I don't like da 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 I don't like the music. And then my next line would be like, don't take this as a real, <laughs> as a real criticism. <laughs> the little asterisk sign. Yeah. Like, also, I don't watch musicals. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not like you know qualifier a, a movie reviewer being like watching an anime movie. It's like, this is only for the audiences who like this. Like, no fucking shit. Anyways, go on. Joshua? Uh... I actually want to use this moment to shine a little light on this on this movie because I had there was an original qualm that I had. Okay. And any as I've mentioned on the show, anytime I have a qualm, I need to understand sure. what I don't like. And when the movie first started, a qualm that I had was some of the songs seemed disembodied isn't right the word the right word, but disconnected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like there was the action that was happening and then there was the music. So it was basically just a music video. Mm -hmm. And it, it went away. Uh, it wasn't like that the whole time. And then I had to, I just, I had to, I just start doing research on the actual production of this movie and what they had to achieve. Yeah. And what, the, because what we're hearing is a mixture of pre recorded, some on set, yep. ADR. Yeah. There's so much going on. For and only like, 55 million. Yeah. yeah. For only 55 million. And there's like, like what the sound editor uh, slash re recording mixer. He walked through one of the scenes, like the party, there's a party scene. And he's like, all of that party that's going on in the background, none of that existed. Yeah. Everybody had to sing. We had to do this. There wasn't music playing. There wasn't that hype, that that thing. They had to create that. Yeah. And there are some things, because they're singing on set, a fucking trash truck will go by and ruin the, the take. take technically. So the actors have to come in. Okay, ADR in itself is hard. Is hard because they're not only matching the timing, they're matching the lips, they're matching projection, now like singing. Yeah, they have to ADR singing, which is like, and to capture the emotion of a of a sung. You sentence. never you never see the same concert twice, so imagine trying to just replicate something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I'm using this moment as like a, a a qualm that I originally had doesn't exist anymore because of the pure technicality. Yeah. That had to go into because. Some of those actors are singing and dancing at the same time while yep. paying attention to their blocking, the their sight line, the where the camera the is. camera, the lights, everything yeah. that they've holy shit. Just walking and singing probably gets me out of breath really yeah. quickly. <laughs> there were a couple of songs that I, I will say that for me were disconnected where it was just it was just a music video. Um but otherwise this uh, on one watch this is a, a wonderful movie to watch yeah. um for me none uh cool movie on <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't i don't really have any um it's it's i went in with expectations and it exceeded them so nice. I'll, Hell say, yeah. I'll say it that way oh uh, that's it I, I I dug this movie. Well, so well, then give us your rating. Give us a rating. It's a five. Like I, well. I like you could have told. You could have said that at the top of the show, Tom. You would have I mean, known. I I I, I could have. Yeah. So it's a five for me. Uh, not to this part. This is the. This is what I hope movie musicals can can achieve. Achieve moving yes. outward. It it has a wonderful way of not only capturing the spirit of old movie musicals where we're gonna make this a visually yes. Yes. Uh, visually stunning thing, but also modernizing it in a way that is more approachable to to those who aren't as familiar with musical theater. So, Hello. Uh, but also like, I don't know, yeah. Also being able to have a musical that deals with topics that are very present right now is also a, a very impressive achievement. 
I mean, yeah, and that's the thing where it's like we had to start also just looking for the the quality work. And I yeah. think take out the movie, it's not it's a fact. It's no there's no two ways. It's black and white that in the heights was a really big deal when it came out. Yes. And it's almost more of a shame that people like me didn't even know it existed. Yeah. I'm going to go next. Uh, Josh, yeah. Josh, next. Five. Okay. Mm. Uh, I, the, much the same of what you said. I There was a point that I stopped it, and I was like, yes, this is what live-action modern musicals can be. Yeah. Uh, it will give them yeah. uh, to Tom, something to strive towards. Like Tom said, like it's not, it's not, we're not just stopping at making an adaptation of the stage film. We're going to use the, the medium to elevate what musicals are trying to do in the first place. Yeah. Uh, so I really... I really dug it. I, I dug it a lot. So, Thom Cinco. I mean, I, I really liked what you. So, I asked before we started watching it, Corey, I was like, what? Why? Why? Why do people go crazy about this movie? What, what's going What? 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 What is in the hype? Just like that, right? <laughs> yeah, it was it just was like, that. like that. I was like, what? What? I don't. I don't get it. I literally don't get it. It's like, imagine it's like, why are people crazy about Spawn? It's like, uh, well, this. Um, but like, um, well, it, and and. I really like what Corey said was like Lin Manuel is a prodigy in his own right. Yeah. And the great playwrights and the musical writers and directors are we know their names, but they're kind of done. This is the new wave. And to see it happening in real time is huge. Yeah. You know, people and we we all know the cliche that artists don't get recognized until they're dead. But this is for the first time we're actually seeing it live and happening and growing and it's in a big bad way. Yeah. Um. And so for me, just seeing that this movie was made for fifty five million dollars, five million dollars more than the Joker was made. Yeah. Um. And that it's absolutely just not even promoted as big as something like that was. I don't know. It's just like it's so just not a money maker, but it's so much more important than any money maker out there. And I hate that. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like even it's with frustrating with Godzilla vs Kong, I'm like, dude, so much marketing into this yeah. movie that's just about one lizard versus a monkey, uh, uh, an ape. Yeah, and then this is like now like it's it's about people. It's actually about people, a community of people. And it's about ideas and it's about history, things that are happening. <laughs> so with that, I'm the Grump. Because you guys are all the Grump. Yeah, it's a five. It's a five. Hey. <laughs> uh, Look at that. That, means that was a long road to five. We got to shout out everybody here yeah. then in that case. All right. We got Dana P. We got Mitchell G. Charlotte G. Brock P. Uh, Justin B. M. Uh, Matt R. No Justin S- Bieber? So- yeah, Justin Bieber. No. <laughs> Justin B. Matt R. No, San- uh, no S. And then General G. Y'all get the shout outs this week. Hell yeah. Justin Bieber wishes he could be on this episode. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He wishes he could be in, ju- in, in a m- member of Nerd on Nation. Yeah. Yeah. He does. Wow. I'm touched, Tom. What? Then you give it five. I, and that's the thing. I can't ignore our artists, our artistic mastery. Yeah. And like, regardless if the director was there, every single performer there deserves their flowers. Yep. Every single music song that was written those writers deserve their flowers. The the, the sound they deserve mixing. deserve that standing O. Yeah, <laughs> like everyone deserves everything for that. You could have had a really shitty director, but like how hard is it to sing and dance and block and do all the things where some people can't fucking act out of a bag? Sure. You know, and it's like, this is crazy good. And that's what I was saying. Like the scope of all the set pieces is like ridiculous. And that's what I'm saying. Like it might have ruined musical films for me. Yeah. Ah. Uh. We there have Watchmen, the series, but musicals. Yeah. This, this it's a whole thing. <laughs> All right. That is this week's episode on In the Heights, a live action musical movie. Everybody yeah, yeah, at home, yeah, yeah. thank you so much for watching. If you're on YouTube, thanks for listening wherever you are. Uh, on that note, we are everywhere podcasts are heard Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere. Check it out. Uh, a really easy way to get all of the information about us nerdon.tv. It has. All of that stuff. You know, before I get into the rest of the housekeeping, let us know what you thought of In the Please. Heights. There is a musicals and theater and a movies channel in our Discord. So let's continue the conversation over there. I know that they're already they're already talking about it now. I know some of them are like, hey, are you doing this? Are you nice. doing this for an episode? So yeah. The hive mind out. is growing. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so check it out. Nerdon.tv backslash Discord. Join that conversation. It's a lot of fun over there. Uh, do consider joining the Nerd on Nation, like I mentioned up at the top. It does allow us to grow. It does allow us to keep on doing the thing, high quality for you guys, because we love doing this. Um, but yeah, that that's the housekeeping. That's all of the, all that's needing. Thank you so much for watching. 
for listening, but you know the drill. As always, nerd on! Ending broadcast. What's going on, Julie? Julie doesn't see this part. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. I'm um, kind of hoping one day she just comp like compiles everything that says Julie doesn't see this part. <laughs>